ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2014 Future Policy Award ceremony with one in three women suffering sexual or physical violence in her lifetime. Violence against women and girls is one of the most pervasive and predominant forms of human rights abuses in the world. The winning laws and policies reflect a broad range of existing policy responses at the local, national, and transnational level. They address different or specific forms of violence or introduce groundbreaking and effective measures. The jury of eminent international experts has selected two laws to be awarded with an honorable mention. So without further ado, an honorable mention has gone to Spain's Organic Act on, in, on Integrated Protection Measures Against Gender Violence 2004. Can we give an honorable mention? mention in vision category has been awarded to Bolivia's law against political harassment and violence against women 2012. <laughs> this year we have a new vision award for the most promising policy approach. I'm delighted that Vision Award is granted to the Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence. <laughs> this award is much bigger than the Istanbul Convention. It is a tribute to the hundreds, thousands, and millions of women across the globe who, have, who are victims of violence, be it physical, sexual, psychological, or economic violence. This award is a call for action on governments, parliamentarians, local and regional authorities, civil society, media, private sector. It's a call for you and me to turn vision into reality. Le temps opère contre nos pères, tout à l'envers. Même nos mères traînent des chaînes d'amour amer. The first Silver Future Police Award goes to Austria. Ladies and gentlemen, for the year 2014, we expect the number of 2,000 victims as beneficiaries of court assistance. These numbers are still somewhat rising, probably not because of an increase in gender violence, rather due to the fact that obviously more cases than before are reported to the authorities. I'm delighted to be here today to announce and present the second Silver Policy Award to Burkina Faso for their law prohibiting female genital mutilation. victime d'aucun acte de mutilation génitale féminine. Je vous remercie. Once considered a private matter, intimate partner violence is today recognized as a human rights violation which occurs in all societies and which carries high human, social and environmental costs. Many governments are still struggling to effectively address this form of violence. 
Introducing a law that defines it as a punishable crime is a first necessary step. But in many countries where such laws exist, they have yet failed to protect survivors and hold perpetrators accountable. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I announce the winner of the 2014 Gold Future Policy Award, the city of Duluth coordinated community response to domestic violence first introduced in 1981. A sincere thanks to the Future Policy Award team for presenting the Domestic Abuse Intervention Project, or the DAIP, with the Gold Future Policy Award. I never imagined the global impact the DAIP would have, but more importantly, how many lives it would save. The success of the Duluth model would not have been possible without the committed and courageous efforts of battered women's advocates in Minnesota who had the bravery to speak truth to power. Their words and actions influenced policymakers in the Minnesota legislature to be one of the first states in the U.S. to change its laws on domestic violence. We are now coming to a close of the session, and I would like to use the opportunity to thank our partners at the Interparliamentary Union and at the United Nations Women for their support. Of course, I also would like to, to thank the fantastic World Future Council team and also Mrs. Voschek, who has been providing a lot of support, vision, and trust for actually starting this whole process. And I'd like to conclude with a quote from UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who said, violence against women and girls makes its hideous imprint on every continent, country, and culture. It is time to focus on the concrete actions that all of us can and must take to prevent and eliminate the scourge. Member states, the United Nations family, civil society and individuals, women and men. It is time to break through the walls of silence and make legal norms a reality in women's lives. Thank you very much.